Hi everyone, welcome back to the Nerds Layer. I'm your host, El Juancho, joined here with the Geek Takeover. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, except it's not Christmas, it's just ungodly cold. It, it yeah. was like, it, like this is more, okay, for the <laughs> viewers that don't know, I live in Florida. I like the cold because I live in Florida. I've never experienced cold. Okay, but it is like 20 degrees and my car was frozen. At least not to this degree, right? Like you've had some cold, right? Before? Oh, yeah. I mean, of course, of course we have cold. Um, <laughs> God, it's been, I feel like it's been years since it's been in the 20s. Mm. But um, I mainly just want to see snow. After that, I can then decide if I like cold or hot weather more. <laughs> but I want to experience snow. Hell yeah. Uh, and as you guys can see, no J money today. He's in either in a uh, Steven's uh shed or he's I don't know trying to stop the cold weather or something. I don't know, but he'll be back. Maybe he got taken out by the cold weather. That'd be nice. <laughs> he's do you think he's in the danger zone? Mm, no, because that means he'd probably be doing cool stuff. Yeah. Speaking of Danger Zone, uh, Top Gun 3. What do you think, uh, Geek? Uh, was um, uh, Tom Cruise returning to? Um, so, I re- so I didn't watch this uh, second one in theater. In theater because I just didn't want to watch it. And then it came out on Paramount Plus And I was like, you know what? I will give a majority of movies a chance on Paramount Plus. Or like, not Paramount Plus, but on streaming. And I loved it. I think Top Gun Maverick is probably that came out what twenty twenty two, right? Yes. Okay. It, I think it's in my top three, if not for sure, top five movies that year. But I'm fairly certain it's top three. Uh, didn't really care for the first one. Um, Same. Do I need a third one? No, not really. It kind of um, ends well too. Like it, it wraps, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. I, I mean. It, I'm sure it'll get people with butts and seats, but it, it, I don't know. It doesn't feel really necessary to me. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I'm with really like, uh, the first one I liked, it was, it was fine, but you know, I started hearing like really good things. And I'm like, you know, should I check it out? And then I ended up catching it in the theaters and I was just blown away, but it's a smart move. It's, you know, it made a billion. No one saw that coming. No one saw that coming. And it's the only thing that surprises me is just because um, you, I bet you saw this when we touched it on our last live here in Culture Shock. Uh, Warner Bros. is uh, teaming up with Tom Cruise. Do you think this might have something to do with that? Or, um, I mean, it's entirely possible. Um, but I also could maybe wonder if, like, Tom Cruise is not a young chicken, so maybe he could be. It could also be partnership in trying to like produce stuff. Yeah. So maybe by Top Gun, they it may not necessarily mean Top Gun three, but it maybe mean like a Top Gun remake. Mm. Maybe with like a Miles Teller character kind of taking over. Possibly, um, yeah. you know, maybe so. I could see something like that, maybe. Saw that, like, uh, Glenn Powell, I think that's how you say his name, was in talks to return, too, so. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, let's see what else. Um, speaking of movies, um, you know, I'm not the, you know, biggest uh, Star Wars fan, but I know, you know, you, you are more than me, and uh, a Mando movie. Mandalorian himself and Grogu. Yeah, so from at least the grapevines that I've heard, I heard that the way that their Star Wars shows mm-hmm. were going, it was ultimately going to culminate in a movie. So I, I think that was definitely, that's the, you know, that's no surprise. Um, and I also know from what I know of this movie is that it's, there's still going to be a season four plus the movie. So that is, should have no concerns for any Mandalorian fans. Um, and of course, and I believe it'll have Dave Filoni writing and John Favreau directing. 
Um, no word on if Pedro Pascal would come back. I'm sure he would obviously do voiceover work, if anything. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't want to stretch him too thin. <laughs> do <Doo-doom. laughs> Um, but um, I think my only thing is if it, if they're doing a movie to in the Mandalorian, or if they'll continue to make more seasons after the movie. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. But also, I want to add, like it, it again, like with Top Gun, it's a smart move. It's I'm pretty sure that what like top. Five the most uh, viewed Disney Plus shows, Mando. Oh, it it I, yeah, it for sure has. To yeah, be. No. like its only competition is Wandavision, and Loki, and maybe Kenobi. Yeah, you know it's also like one of the best reviewed like Star Wars things, and you know, for the most part, I can't really judge it myself. Uh, again, yeah, I I'd see it making a billion. Mm, I don't, I don't, or do you think that's too that's it's a very I'm, popular character you can't deny it oh for sure yeah, no. but i'm only saying that because of just the way things are now i feel like we gotten i think with the way that marvel and disney were a billion dollar movie just seemed natural but because of covid and the fact that since covid we've had so top gun maverick mm-hmm. no way home Barbie and Oppenheimer, I think, are the only movies to gross over a billion since. Oh yeah, Jurassic 20- World. I'm sorry, Jurassic World Dominion or not Dominion? Um, yeah, Dominion. No, that, yeah, that grossed a billion dollars. Yeah, I was surprised too. <laughs> what? The- okay, um, gross so, pondering. <laughs> yeah, because that movie was terrible. Anyway, so five, so five <laughs> movies. Five movies with now within the span of now four years, you know, and I'm going to count the whole entirety of 20. Actually, no, I won't count 2020 because nothing really came out. So three years, 2021, 22, and 23, five movies have grossed a billion dollars. So I think now it's definitely when you look at it at at that perspective, it a billion dollars definitely seems a lot harder to obtain. So, yeah. and none of them have been Disney really. I mean, you can say yeah. Avatar because that's Fox. And- you know, that's oh shit! Disney. Avatar, yes. Yeah, so six movies. Holy crap! Yeah. I can't believe I forgot about that because I don't. I don't understand. You know. Um. Anyways, yeah. That's for another. I think, day. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think once Deadpool three comes out, then you could ask me again. Will. Yeah. It will. How often and how common will billion dollar movies be? Because I think Deadpool three could be a good guess for that. Yeah. And Deadpool, like the. First to have made like over eight hundred, so yeah, the first one uh, did like eight hundred, and I think the second one did five six hundred, give or take. Yeah, something like that. Okay, well, well, we'll have to see what the Mando brings to the table. If this is the way. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's 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 their uh, cash cow, so it it must be. Yeah, man. And they, you know they'll they'll definitely sell that merchandise, all the Grogu stuff that they already sold. Oh my god, <laughs> dude, you yeah, can't I mean, escape that. Holy crap! Like I, I walk outside, that. I just see something Grogu related. <laughs> but the world of DC, and we touched this on our live as well. Um, uh, Supergirl um, castings or three act, yeah, three actresses are being looked at. Uh, Millie Alcock, uh, Amelia Jones, and Meg Donnelly. Already given my opinions, I, I think Meg Donnelly is like the most, you know, the one I'm more familiar with. So that's my pick. But well, what's your um, what's your uh, take on this geek? Uh, so I really only know one because of House of the Dragons. Uh, so Millie Acock, um, mm. I, I, I'm only going to say I don't like it because I saw a fan cast of her as Gwen Stacy, and I very much so loved that idea. So, yeah, I personally would want her for Gwen Stacy. 
Yeah. Hell yeah. And the other two, do you are you just like hey, I, okay. I I generally have no idea who the other two are, so <laughs> So it's just a wait and see. Not that because that's where I'm at right now. It's yeah, well I'll see what's up. Yeah, more or less, yeah. Please. Next year. Assuming she does appear in Superman, but you never know. You what you don't know is uh what's going on with Harley Quinn. So Margot Robbie, uh, she was like, she's talking about how she's gonna be taking a break from acting, you know, like after Barbie, and uh, she also said that she didn't say explicitly that she's done. She did say, you know, and I kind of wish someone. I'm I'm paraphrasing, like she was essentially wants someone to like take over. She wouldn't mind it because you already got Lady Gaga, you know, and Joker later this year. Yeah. What do you think? Because, uh, you know, there's people, oh, she should stay. And then there's, you know, a couple, just a very few that like, wouldn't mind if they got a new one, a new actress. I feel as though Margot Robbie gives me the vibes that she's a type of actress that I don't think wants to necessarily be tied down. Um, I'm not like all too familiar with her work but i mean i know wolf of wall street um the movie with wolf smith obviously her Harley quinn products barbie um she definitely gives me the type of vibes of like scarlett johansson to want to also produce she she just gives me those kind of vibes so i could and and she's she's not old by any means but she's also not like young uh, yeah. by any means either so depending on like what these studios and i'm not just talking about like dc in general just studios in general depending on how young they want their characters to be they may not want margot robbie because they want somebody that could play this character for 10 plus years yeah and for her it'd be like almost 15 at that point yeah, or take so, but I'll say this: like I, I agree with everything you said, but I do think Margot Robbie will work with James Gunn again. That I I can guarantee. Yeah, yeah. who? Well, you know, a lot of people got their fan cast, but definitely see her working in something like um, The Authority or some something, something, whatever, whatever Gunn wants in store. But yeah, and, uh. I guess that does it for that part. Now to the, I guess the two-parter. Got confirmation. Well, there's rumors, but there is a confirmation. There's rumors that Foggy and um, Karen are coming back um, from Daredevil. And then there's confirmation that all the Netflix stuff, you know, the Defender Saga is canon now with the MCU. What do you what what's your main takeaway from this geek? Um two things. One, um, as far as the canon aspect, I've told you and I'll now make it a public record. I think until Born Again comes out, they could put this on the Disney timeline on Disney Plus. Yeah. But until we could physically like see what they consider to be canon, I'm not really taken to too much out of it and then with that as well i'm also going to say that from my understanding obviously that the show is getting pretty much completely redone but i understood that it was kind of going to be taking place during the blip and then post blip so when i heard that karen and uh, foggy weren't coming back originally i looked at that and i said well okay they just got blipped yeah. makes sense to me um so that's how i that's at least the impression i always took it as because you know we've never have any official confirmation that they weren't originally going to return so because of that that's how i view that so i'm not surprised at all yeah no i i agree i think i told you to him like you know had they not kept made a canon i would have like lost sleep over it it's, it's fine either way because, like, from what you and Jay told me and, you know, from my, what I remember seeing, like, there's nothing really in those shows that contradict, you know, the MCU. 
Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, about the Karen and the Foggy thing, yeah, I'd say I'm surprised, but not really. Only because I was getting the impression they were going to either like not include them or uh, they uh, recasted a uh, freaking Vanessa, right? So yeah. I was figuring they were gonna, they were kind of gonna do the same. And uh, yeah, no, I, from what I also heard, I think I heard this like on Twitter or something, is that the this whole canon thing was after, after the whole like you know, re they were like redoing Daredevil from scratch. Mm-hmm. So we'll have to see what else comes of it. You know, and again, it, it is more of the grounded stuff. It's not like you know, Daredevil's up fighting with the Chitari or some shit, or I don't know, or Luke Cage is fighting the Black Order. No, Luke Cage stuff. is busy making coffee. Yeah, sweet Christmas. <laughs> you know, uh, but that leads us right into Echo. Echo. Our review. Well, we're gonna touch on okay. spoilers, so if you guys haven't seen it, recommend to tune out and watch it. Or if you don't care, uh, join us. Geek, uh, your overall impressions. Okay. Um, God, I'm gonna try and collect my thoughts as I'm speaking. So if I take pauses, I apologize. So no right off the bat, I will say this: I enjoyed the show. Um. I don't think it's the best show they put out there, but I also, it, it's not the worst by any means. I would have to kind of go through each show to say if I would put it over that or not. Um, so it's, I feel like it kind of fits perfectly in the middle of like TV show rankings. Um, mm-hmm. I feel as though, and I'll talk positives first and then I'll get to the negatives. But um, so positives, I feel like, they definitely like to flirt with the idea of the TVMA aspect. Um, I also feel like they they didn't do as much as I was expecting, which it could have just been in me. It could have been me um, just expecting more for TVMA. But I think the way they did a lot of their stuff was extremely well done. Uh, I loved Alaco Cox. I loved Vincent, De- Vincent D'Onofrio. Some of the other characters I could have done maybe without. Um, Oh, and the ones that stole the show to me were um, Billy Jack, and I think I think that was the dog's name, Billy Jack, and yeah. But, but start his the guy's name started with a B, and I can't think of it. But I don't know why I want to call him Rufus. I know it's not Rufus. Buster was that the guy's name? Which one? The the one with the dog, Billy G. Billy Biscuit? Jack. Biscuit. Oh, my. I, lo- I loved Biscuit. I thought he was just so funny. I felt natural, so- too. His chemistry was her. Yeah. He was just a, a, he was just a delight. Um, the action sequences were really, really good. Um, I did love the fact that I feel like Pete, a lot of people – probably wanted to watch the show for daredevil um and i love the fact that those people that probably told themselves oh i'm only watching this for daredevil got to eat their words because he only appeared in one episode i'm happy because i'm happy because it is echo not daredevil echo so (laughs) you know good for her and a very very solid show i'm very happy about it um now, as far as like negatives go, I really only have two. Um, one of them, and, and I don't even know. I'm not even going to consider this one like a big negative. So, I feel like a lot of the Native American aspects of it, obviously, with uh, us not being Native Americans, it's very well possible it didn't click to us. But I feel like her power aspect didn't make sense to me at all. Um, and neither did like the story of the back, the background of her st- of her powers it made no sense to me. It, it may as Native Americans, I don't know, uh, so I won't really. And then also, I don't know about you, but for some of the subtitles for the uh, sign language, it never showed up for me. 
So like there will just be parts where it's quiet and I'm seeing them throw up sign language and I'm just like, okay, I I can think I could put together what they're saying, but hmm, that never happened to me. Eh, it might have just been me. Yeah. So I think you do a seven out of ten or six out of ten. I, uh, I think I yeah I think it's a seven out of ten is solid. Yeah. Thank you. Um. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, I definitely do like her character. I won't say I love her character, but I do want to see more of her. And uh, some of the action was great. I wanted to ask you, though, do you think, because I don't even remember, like, say a year ago, maybe even two, like, there was, you know, rumblings, oh, like, it was having issues as Daredevil, like, they were, like, redoing it, and it was scrappy, you know. There were just, like, there was production issues, and do you think that the TVM may... TV amazing might have been a last minute thing, or because it, it 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 was violent, but it didn't feel like you know. It felt like they were flirting with it, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying they had to be. I'm not saying like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying like, do, do do you feel that way? Do you feel like they were like, hey, th- this this is actually like very you know. It's close enough. Let's just make it TVMA and throw a couple, you know, blood splatters here and there. Uh, when you put it like that, I could definitely see that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I like the, you know who I also like the, you said biscuits. I also like the Scully, the guy who owns the pawn shop. Oh, yeah, the grandpa. <laughs> funny. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, he was great. Also, I didn't hate them, but I also didn't like click with them uh like bonnie or the what's the the grandma chula uh i don't remember i just remember biscuit calling her granny yeah like they 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 felt like um they just felt like filler characters to me but i if i get to the negatives now uh see oh yeah that that last action scene I, i was like ranting to jay about this uh like it made, I guess it made sense for the story, but the whole thing of, you know, now I've got the powers. Now you guys got the powers. That felt a little cheesy. It's like, like yeah, it's cool that the grandma's kicking ass, but all of a sudden I'm like, what? And then there's the guy with the freaking rocket launcher, and like, yeah, that, definitely no one's gonna see him, right? You know, uh, King from the I forgot his name. The I don't know. He reminded me of Woody Harrelson for some reason. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, definitely one of the main characters is not going to see you just freaking aiming. Yeah. So that that felt a little hokey. Uh, yeah, no, overall, I'd say for me, it's a, a 6 out of 10. Like, initially, I told you it was a 7, but just the more I thought about it. And I agree with some of the, you know, even though visually it was cool, like, it kind of felt a little confusing at times. The Native American stuff. Yeah. Um, like I like the the black and white one they did. Was it like episode three? I forgot uh, what episode yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah, that that one's cool, but yeah. What do you think of the post credits though? What could that um, mean? The... Well, see that I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that with another question because all right, all right. it could mean a lot of things. You know, obviously, I mean, it's going to mean Mayor Kingpin, which. I'm sure will could easily play into a factor of Spider-Man four. And I like the idea that I saw either on TikTok or Twitter that said Spider-Man leading the defenders to go take on Kingpin. I really like that idea. But the, uh, the question that I will answer to that is what did, what did Maya do to Kingpin? Because I, I, I'm so, I'm very confused. Be, well, it's, so, that's like, what I'm thinking too. <laughs> like, she, not only did she shoot him, but he's like, "Let's have dinner." I forgive you. Let, let's have dinner. And then, like, uh, she he wants to meet her at the airplane, and then he throws a fit because she doesn't meet him. And then now you want to kill his her family. Uh, well, I feel like as far like, so before like the finale, like whenever she did her thing with her powers to him, I feel like the reason why he forgave her could easily be because it reminded him of what he did to his dad, except obviously he didn't die. And he was very proud of her for that. 
and that's why he wanted to bring her back so he could basically like actually make her his daughter and make her the queen pin and when she rejected him that's when he like lost it because he wanted her to be like him so that to me that all makes sense it's whatever she did to him in the finale makes no sense to me because we I, i i don't even know how to put it in words so i hope that the mayor kingpin stuff leads to the mayor kingpin stuff and hopefully the powers don't. I don't. I thought she was going to heal his eye, like just straight up heal it. Yeah, though. I don't. And did they explain that, exactly how that got fixed? Did they just like patch him up quickly? <laughs> like, grab uh, it's it's a comic book show, but I should have. Uh, I was under the impression that the eye patch that he wore with the uh, contacts that he that they made just like helped heal his eye so that or like or not heal his eye but like retissue it oh retissue duh the um age of ultron whatever mrs cho was working on it could have easily been that oh yeah no. but you. um <laughs> speaking of the contacts that straight up like honestly the contacts and the earpiece that he had that is such a genius thing and i would I don't know if that's a real thing or not, but if it's not, uh, we as people should work on that because that is just amazing. That's such an awesome thing to think about. Heck yeah. I agree. I agree with Steven here. Write that down, guys. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> I actually think, I think Major King Kun might be in Cat 4. I, I don't know why. I just I got the suspicion like, it's it's like not even gonna play a role. He's just gonna have a cameo there, just whatever and whatever you know, Sam was doing. I could I could see it. I could actually see something like that, but I can I I see that. Let me raise it. I could see maybe not a, exactly like this, but I could easily see a scenario where uh, President Ross could endorse Kingpin. Maybe not yeah. like. Maybe not exact like that because obviously Ross still has his own uh, ideology and uh, morals to follow, but I could still easily see him giving Kingpin like, you know what, this guy's changed, he's good. Yeah. I could easily see that in wherever the next time we see Kingpin. Hell yeah. And I don't, I don't think he'll be the guy to like Spider Man for us till. Way far off, we don't know when that's coming, but I don't think he'll be the main villain. He'll uh, be a no. villain, but I, I don't like. I could see Kingpin <laughs> culminating being the main villain of the second Spider-Man trilogy, like four, five, six. I could see that being a thing. Like, or, I could or see... do you think, or do you think, like, not in four or like five, but do you think he'll be like the villain in six, maybe? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I could I could see that easily. Like I could, I could see him see... being like the guy in the back, like kind of like in the '90s years. He was just like, or in the comics, just he's just hiring whomever he feels like, like Mister Negative was, or yeah. Yeah, I was ex- I was going to say exactly <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Or you, he'll hire you, but I don't think you'd want to fight Tom Holland. <laughs> but um, now I do, will say this. Speaking of like, you know. Mayor Kingpin and you know when we see him next um do you now that you finish this the show do you see Echo coming back because I personally I, I'm going to tell you right now no I don't I don't see her coming back like at all or just in the near no I just uh, I mean unless maybe as like a defender's cameo but, I think born again. That, that's that's the only thing I could think of. But even that, just, I don't. Yeah, her story just doesn't fit it in anywhere. Yeah. I, like definitely, I don't. I don't think. I don't think she'd be like in a King Dynasty or Secret Wars. Maybe like a oh, small yeah. little, you know, cameo. Like, hey, you know, come on in, shoot something. But I don't. No, that's actually raised a good point because it's like it leaves it open, very open ended. So, 
Unless they've hinted at stuff, because there, I've not, I've unless you have, I have not heard anything about a season two for the show. Oh no, I don't, I don't think. Yeah. I'm going to go on a limb, and I'm going to say spotlights are just going to be one-offs. I don't think many spotlights could be multiple yeah. seasons. I mean, obviously that could be wrong if Daredevil is a spotlight and it's TVMA, but you know, and obviously until we get another TV or not TVMA, another spotlight project, you know. Yeah. Is what it is. Yeah. So overall, I go, you know, not not personally, you know, Geek and I are like not as bad as people were pointing out to be, but not not great. Because so like, that trailer kind of blew everyone away. But, oh, yeah. yeah. I think for having no, having like, having low expectations for something mm-hmm. and then watching it and being, even if it's not great, having low expectations. It, it can really blow the roof off of something for you. So, or it doesn't, then you get Rebel Moon. But, you know, uh, She Hulk, you know, I wanted to touch on this because it just came out like yesterday or a couple of days ago. You probably saw the, yeah, uh, Tatiana Miss Laney. She uh, said, um, something about like she was asked of a season two, and she kind of like said something about along the lines, oh, we kind of blew our budget. <laughs> Do you think she's just trolling, or do you think there will be a season two of She-Hulk, or we'll see She-Hulk soon? Uh, so I think two things. One, uh, 1,000%, um, when, when when she said, oh, yeah, we blew our budget, to me, I took that as, like, oh, you're just you're just joking around. Like, yes. you know, that's such a, like, that's such a funny thing to say that it makes sense that, Oh yeah, we we blew our budget, guys. We're not gonna get a season two, um, so I I feel confident we will, uh, but I also feel confident in saying that I don't think actors and actresses are told as much as maybe people think. Yeah. Um, especially nowadays. Yeah, but I mean, I'm yeah. sure they're still told. Like, um, uh, I'll just throw an example, like. Well, obviously, I'm sure Feige told Tatiana that, oh, yeah, hey, in one of these Avengers movies or both of these, you we're going to have you come back. Um, and I just think there's just too, so much on Marvel's plate that I don't think they're thinking too much about s- second seasons of mini shows. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think uh, season two, love it or hate it, like, you know, it's still like. You know, some people like her as the character, so we'll definitely see more of her. It's more of a matter of when, so whenever this multiverse saga ends, I'd say that's a guaranteed bet. So, yeah. Same with Moon Knight and Miss Marvel, but like you said, we'll just have to see. Oh, yeah. For, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Guess that wraps it up tonight. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And uh, guys, keep an eye out. Uh, if by the time this video is out, we'll also have the Monarch uh, review with our special guest, Blue, and, uh, of course, Jay Money, Geek's rival. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Geek. And I'm oh, sorry. I was going to say, well, speaking of wrapping it up, uh, also, you know, at the time that we're recording this, we're having the, basically, the winter storm so you know make sure to keep it wrapped up yeah stay careful out there folks nerds you know yeah recent comics hell has frozen over oh yeah for sure for sure so mr just hear i can just hear you like freaking having the chills over there (laughs) (laughs) well no i I, i'm it's spot (laughs) Well, Mr. El Honcho, where can people find you? Do we have to go to the North Pole? No, you can follow me at jmoneydeej on Instagram. And uh, I'm kidding. No, you can follow me at Barrio El Honcho on Instagram. And uh, yeah, Twitch too. I should might have a stream planned for soon, but I'll let you guys know more. So, uh, but, but what about you, uh, The Geek Takeover? Uh, you can find me watching the stream that you may be talking about soon. Oh, yeah. 
Jay, you can follow him. I already said where you can follow him. He'll be back. He's inevitable. He's inevitable. He's like a fixed point. Uh, yeah. I don't know about a fixed point, but he's a, he's a <laughs> thing. Yo, check out our socials, Culture Shock. You know, like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, bye bye. Stay warm. Oh yeah.